Hello COM202 students! Welcome to this video tutorial in which we will talk about why library resources, how to use library resources, and some of the uh, facts and features of the databases that are a little bit tricky and hard to get used to. So without further ado, let's hop into it. Google versus library resources. First of all, why does it matter so much? Why can't I just go and uh, start Googling my search topic and get what I, where I get? So one of the first things we should consider is uh, what Google knows about you or any potential user uh, when you are doing your searches using Google. And so one of the most uh, popular answers that you might think of first will be your location, right? Uh, so this is why when you type in McDonald's hours, uh, it will give you the McDonald's in Gunnison, Colorado, because it would do you no good to have the one that's in East Lansing, Michigan, okay? Uh, so this is one of those things that we overlook because we're so used to having Google uh, build it into our lives, right? So anytime that you're using your phone, they know where you are. Anytime that you are using a browser with an, an unmasked IP address, it knows where you are. And it takes all those things into account, right? So local um, phrases that you might be using could be different from location to location. Uh, whatever um, topics that you're searching for could be different depending on uh, what's happening where you are, right? In contrast, library databases don't do that. <laughs> All they care about is whether you're on campus or off campus, right? If you are off campus, you might have to log in to access some things uh, because it doesn't know that you're associated with us. Uh, when you pay tuition to a university, uh, a lot of that money goes into uh, getting access to databases and journals, all those resources. So sometimes you have to go through us in order to make sure that it knows. Otherwise, it really doesn't care. The next thing will be your identity and search history, right? Uh, in addition to all the things that Google knows about you, it might know that your birthday, it might know uh, all of the things that you've looked for in the past, um, whatever device you've been on. It could know uh, things like your age and all the places that you have been with your phone and its location services turned on. Um, it can know the things that you've bought recently, right? It stores all of those things and builds this profile of you, which is how they get their money. And so, uh, uh, when you're looking at library databases, one of the biggest differences here are going to be what we share and what we don't share. Google will tell uh, the government uh, what you're up to, where you are. Um, warrants have been issued on the basis of where your phone says you have been. <laughs> and uh, of course, they are always listening to you through your microphones, right? So uh, we've had a lot of issues uh, with these mm, technological corporations and uh, kind of an overreach situation. So with the library, you don't have to worry about that because we have total anonymity for you. No memory, head empty, as they say. So uh, this basically means that we pay EBSCOhost and all of our databases a lot of money to ensure your privacy and security as a researcher, right? Uh, it also uh, goes against FERPA laws uh, to have um, student information just out in the open like that. So um, we'll talk a little bit about the no memory part because it does lead to some issues uh, with usability <laughs> when you are looking at databases. But this is a key part of who we are as libraries. Um, in our place uh, as librarians, we have to find against a lot of uh, unfair restrictions, right? Um, we think that information should be free of and available to everyone. Um, the FBI would love a list of people who want to check out the Anarchist Cookbook from us, but we will do everything we can to prevent that information from getting out short of legal proceedings. So. Finally, the last thing is natural language processing. Google is really, really good at uh, deciphering what words are important and not important in a search string. When you type in, or your grandma types in, more likely, Dear Mr. Google, can I please learn how to uh, change my car's oil? Uh, it knows which words are important and which words to drop, um, which is a feature that you don't appreciate until you have to use a library database and you're like, well, you know, <laughs> what's going on? I type in the Lord of the Rings and I get something different from Lord of the Rings because it doesn't prioritize really uh, any of the words that you're using um, on any kind of basis. It just goes with whatever it goes with <laughs> and uh, it doesn't help you with any kind of spell checking. It gives you no synonyms. It has no natural language processing and uh, you have to do all of that work yourself. So 
Does this make it a little harder? Yes, of course. Uh, but it, it does give you more control, ultimately. So let's review. Google is a snitch. They will make money off of your information. Um, they are doing this whole global uh, conditioning thing to make you want to take the easy way out, right? So uh, using library databases for the first time um, can be really frustrating because you aren't used to uh, having to do all of these things, having to select your settings, having to choose your words wisely, having to know how a word is spelled. And uh, it, it can be hard and you might want to run back to Google as an instinct, but I encourage you to give it a chance. So. Library resources um, make their money by ensuring your privacy, forgetting who you are, and uh, it is harder to use, but ultimately you are the one who has to do this work yourself. So, all right, let's go and do some of the searching then. So in a new tab, uh, I'm going to library.western.edu. If you're coming in from the Western homepage, uh, we are the link that's under academics right here. If you hover over this and go all the way down to the bottom of the list, you'll see the library link. Uh, of course, I know that you all uh, have it bookmarked and saved as your homepage, so no worries there, but just in case. Uh, and so on this library homepage, a few things I want to point out before we go into our research guide. Uh, a lot of people think that this all search is just the end all be all, right? <laughs> it's the way to go. And unfortunately, this is one of those uh, library lies. Um, it is not intuitive at all. This all tab um, is supposed to combine books and media and article search into one whole big search. But this all term is misleading because number one, it does not search through all of our databases. In our articles databases, um, it only searches through uh, about 100 of our top biggest databases. We have 200 overall. And in the other case, it also contains a lot of um, abstracting databases uh, that may not actually have a book. So I'm sure uh, at least a few of you have tried using this alt tab to look for a book and then you've gone, wait a minute, it says ebook here. It says that, you know, this is a book that we have. What's going on? Well, we don't actually have that book. We have the information about that book. So it's very misleading. <laughs> so I encourage you not to use it. Where I do want you to go, is over to the instruction tab and then down to class guides. So over in class guides, if we scroll down to COM202 and this alphabetical list here, uh, this is a guide that I put together to try and help give you some structure as you're doing all of your searches. So. Um, this first page, your topics page, will help you uh, do that preliminary research that you should be doing to make sure that your topic is going to be a sustainable one, an interesting one to you, and one that you won't be tired in, of by the end of the semester because once you pick one, you're stuck with it. So. Um, a few things about these uh, topic um, areas. Uh, the first one is kind of this heat map, Gail's Topic Finder here. Uh, if we click on that, this is a heat map of all of the different um, papers or articles that are about a certain topic that you might be looking for. So I might put in something like uh, weed. If I put in weed, I will get, after it loads, because again, we don't have Google money, so uh, we might have things like weed management, weed control. Uh, the things that are more red and bigger up here in this corner are going to be topics that are more popular, basically. The green ones are going to be less popular and so on. So. Uh, what we want to do here, though, is really focus in on the words because, again, uh, this is that thing of where <laughs> when you type in weed into Google, Google will naturally understand that by weed you might mean marijuana, you could mean um, cannabis, you could mean also like a plant as a weed um, when you're gardening, right? It all depends on their context that they've built around for you, whether you're a 40 year old gardening fanatic and you're typing up weed solution uh, versus a 20 year old stoner. So. If we were to scroll down into these, and this I'm just using my scroll wheel on my mouse here, um, I can see basically what people are talking about the most in these terms. Um, so this is a good way to collect uh, different types of words, so synonyms here. So if I type in marijuana versus weed, I'll get something different. If I type in cannabis or cannabinoid, I might get something different. Uh, and so uh, this, again, is getting maybe a little bit confused by the term weed because it's got herbicide and farmers. So if I did marijuana and waited again, cool visualization. 
it's going to give me uh, some different things here, right? So medical marijuana, legalization, arrests, that type of thing. And uh, you can usually you can click on these a little bit easier and it will produce uh, some results here uh, that you can really click on and see. But this one is not letting me today, so that's all right. Uh, so again, this is a way to start brainstorming some different uh, key terms that you could be using in your search string. So. That was Gail's Topic Finder. Uh, if I go through Issues and Controversies, Opposing Views and Context, and Global Issues and Context, these three are basically databases designed to uh, show you opposing views. Um, so this can be really good to figure out what the discussion or the chatter about your topic might be, um, what people are arguing, and if their argument is solid or not, um, which you will have to decide later for yourself. So I'm going to do Global Issues and Context just to get us started. And this is a Gale database. So unlike uh, most of our databases, um, Gale is one that is a little bit unique. It's not our biggest one, but it does have a lot of different offshoots. So uh, one of the things we could do um, is go and search for our topic, or we can scroll down and see some of the issues that they've brought up. So I did food security over here earlier, so it's purple. Uh, but this will give us basically a little you know, rundown of what it means to be food secure or in secure uh, and so that can help you with your search terms again and most importantly when you scroll down a little bit here into this gray banner are your um, source selection pieces so almost every database regardless of how it's displayed will allow you to do things like change your date range will help you um, figure out your sources and in this case um, if you want viewpoints um, this is going to be what are going to be like little short essays that are uh, designed to be for or against something so Usually you can tell by the color uh, which one <laughs> will be for something or against something. Uh, so if I am interested in this article and I click on it, the body of the article is usually just going to be right here. It's going to be super easy. Uh, but one of the things that you should pay attention to is this URL up here. So uh, these links up here aren't always going to work for you. <laughs> In most cases for library databases, they don't uh, because each one is basically a um, little temporary link essentially because it has maybe some information about you and your session uh, that it doesn't want to remember later so anytime you see some kind of blank page after you've come back to a link or have left to get a coffee and come back to your computer it's because the search timed out so uh, if I want to come back to this page I have to go to the top right up here and say click get, get link here and copy and paste this and this will be your link uh, one of the other things you should know about Gale, though, is that when you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you will get a little quick and dirty source citation here, and you can choose your own style, uh, but it's not always perfect. So uh, in this case, it doesn't have the um, sentence casing that or title casing that I would expect for APA, so that's not correct, uh, but it does have a lot of details here, and it has a link, and this way you don't have to misspell, you know, 10 authors' names. Uh, so. Uh, don't, you know, this isn't the end all be all, but you should definitely check it. You're responsible for making sure your citations are correct, but it is a nice um, little start for you. So, all right, that is a Gale site. And uh, next, let's hop over to our reference sources tab. So that was the topics tab. Reference sources have a lot of different resources here that are basically going to be, again, background uh, because you do want to make sure that you have um, different directions that you can go into for all of your various um, subtopics, right? So. Um, a lot of these things are going to be uh, basic information, uh, but also might help you give you some different terms to search for uh, when you're doing your research. So. Uh, let's go over to databases. Though. So databases is where we're going to finally get into doing some of this research. Uh, this catalog is going to give us books and ebooks, um, so that's more background. Uh, but when you really want to get into the meat of the research, uh, we always search for articles, and that's because journal articles are kind of like the breaking news of uh, the scholarly world, I guess. Um, there, you know, it's a different type of publication, and that's usually where people go uh, to publish this really cool thing that they found. So, let's look for college students and sleep, just to start us off. And we wait because, again, you know, all these websites look like they were built in like the 90s or 2000s, and uh, yeah, it's for a lot of reasons. So, all right. 
So let it refresh again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is giving me 3,395 results, but for college students in sleep. What if I did university students in sleep? 3,395 turns into 3,323. So these are different results, <laughs> okay? Uh, some of them may have some overlap here if they've, uh, if the authors have put in um, college versus uh, university in the subject lines, um, but this isn't always going to be true. So if I were to, if I wanted to include both college and university as like an either or thing, I would put in little parentheses to keep them separate, university or college, and I'm capitalizing because I want to keep them separated, but you don't have to. Um, and if I do that, now it's 5,653. So that looks more like both of those results combined. Uh, so <laughs> um, I have to do this space here. I don't think that's going to change anything. Yeah, okay. So uh, this basically is the start of using advanced search for real, for real. Uh, this is totally necessary, as you can see, because university or college um, will get you much more, <laughs> many more results than you would get with just university or just college. And if you don't want to keep on trying to make new searches every single time to try and con come up with all of the different synonyms, uh, you have to go use your advanced search. So, uh, keeping this or thing in mind, uh, all our options for searching are going to be and, or, or not. Uh, so this and is very strict. So this and would be if I wanted to make sure that I have university or college, um, well, we're going to keep it university or college, and students and sleep. And if I put parentheses around this again, just to keep them separated and neat and everything. Uh, but what if I also want to exclude and say I don't want um, insomnia, because that's something that's like really, you know, uh, prescribed? No, I mean diagnosed. So uh, in this case, university or college will tell your database, hey, I want either university or college. It could have both. It doesn't matter. As long as one of those words is fulfilled, I'm okay. And then I also want and students and sleep so that I'm making sure that I'm not just looking at um, sleep studies that happened at a university, but that didn't actually study students, right? So, and I want to exclude the word insomnia because I don't want um, people who are strictly diagnosed with a uh, serious sleep disorder. So once I do all that in search, I am going to get 35,696 uh, results. This is a bunch, right? Uh, <laughs> this is a lot. And if, again, if you want to see the differences, if I just take out college, 35,000 goes to just a few hundred less. So. Uh, this could be because people are getting better at including different synonyms in their searches. But uh, once we have a page like this, and obviously you would want to cut down on these results a lot more, um, the ideal is between 20 and about 200 because then you can go through and look through all of them. Um, we do this by using this left hand tab here. Uh, so here I might click full text to make sure that I'm only seeing uh, titles and abstracts that we have the actual uh, journals for. And then maybe I want things that have happened in the last 10-ish uh, years. And again, waiting for it. Um, 10,000 less. And then here in the sources, I might want news articles because I just want a blurb and to, to figure things out really quickly. And I don't necessarily want the academic studies yet. Uh, maybe I also want uh, mental health in there. And once you have a page of results that looks good, it's about between 20 and about 200. Uh, if I want to come back to this page, if you're like, oh, I need to go run off to work or to a sport or to something else, you go over to this share button in the middle right hand side. And then all the way down to the bottom, use permalink right here. And this will bring you back to this results with all the changes that you've made up to this point. It'll remember everything. Um, but if not, you will not be able to see these results again without doing all of those steps. So. Let's take a closer look here at one of these articles. So let's say that I like this article and uh, on the right hand side is where I find all my tools to save it. I can click the cite button and I can get a, again, quick and dirty citation here. And again, this uh, casing um, 
sentence casing is not correct, uh, but it is there so I don't have to misspell pen grid. Uh, so if I click permalink here, I can also come back to this and just grab this and get back to this page. But some people get confused here because they're like, wait, this is just the abstract, this is just, you know, a whole bunch of subjects uh, and the authors. Where is the actual article? And the article is hidden on this left-hand side. The full text finder uh, is a link resolver. Sometimes if there's a PDF, it'll also just be attached here with the little icon. But if you do click through the full text finder, you might have to go through any one of these <laughs> links here. So we have a lot of different options here. I just picked the first one. And here it is indeed. We have a PDF that you can just download from there. So. Um, yes, it's a lot of steps. Yes, it can be hard, uh, but it is definitely rewarding because you deserve to be able to see all the results. Uh, the other part of this is that uh, with these uh, what is it, 90 results, the page, the results on your last page might be just as good as the results on the first page. Because again, it doesn't have any of those things that Google knows about you to determine what is relevant to you or what's not relevant. So um, it's really, really good to uh, have these little tips in mind when you're doing your searches. If you do have any questions, though, of course, email me and uh, I am always around. You can also use this chat help button on the side uh, and uh, contact me in any way. Okay, so that's it for me today. Uh, I will see you all later. Bye.